So there are several ways of uh, depositing a film onto a substrate with chemical solution deposition methods. Uh, one of them is inkjet printing. And here we will demonstrate inkjet printing. With inkjet printing, you have two possibilities. You can either print tracks, very thin tracks, or you can coat the whole surface when all the droplets are spread out over the whole surface. Now for buffer layers, for making buffer layers for coated conductors, we can deposit this uh, lanthanum zirconate um, uh, buffer layer with inkjet coating. The other buffer layer, cerium oxide, can also be deposited with inkjet coating. So when we want to coat a whole substrate with these droplets, we want the droplets to spread out evenly over the whole surface. To adjust this spreading, we can increase the wettability of the substrate, we can change the viscosity of the solution, and we can also change the opening of the nozzle the ink of the inkjet printer, and we can apply a different pressure to the ink uh, chamber of the, ink, the inkjet printer. It's not a very good idea to use inks based on suspensions, at least not uh, suspensions of, of the one, two, three phase as such, because then you, have, you will have nucleation of the one, two, three, three phase on the surface of, of the particles. This is a single nozzle head used for small scale inkjet printing. But if you want to inkjet print on a continuous basis, we need a continuous reel-to-reel -reel system and therefore we use a 16 nozzle head inkjet printer. The blue one is the first spool where the nickel tungsten rabbit is fed into the coater and here inside the tension is made. Here is the dip coating unit or alternatively the inkjet unit. Then we have two furnaces. The 60 degree furnace is just for drying the tape. Here we have the second furnace downside with 100 degrees centigrade where the tape is completely dried in wet atmosphere. And finally the tape is collected in a helix on a ceramic spool. So the final layer is the YBCO layer. Looks like this the ink for the YBCO layer and this can be um, deposited with inkjet printing or inkjet coating. The first step is to insert the solution into the ink chamber. When this is done, when we have the right position, we adjust all the parameters such as the opening time of the nozzle, number of increments, the interdroplet distance, and the number of cycles. After the deposition of the film onto the substrate, we will heat treat the substrate now into the furnace. Once you have made this uh, coating of uh, liquid, you only need to bake your material to decompose the precursors, the metal organic precursors that you have used. And after that, you have some kind of homogeneous uh, nanometric material. And from this nanometric material, to grow an epitaxial oxide. In the case of the trifluoroacetate precursors, you are converting barium fluoride, copper oxide and nitrogen oxide nanoparticles which we have generated during the pyrolysis to the single epitaxial oxide or YBCO. And to do that we need to enter some water and exit some HF. The diffusion of this uh, uh, ga uh, gas is what controls the growth rate. So this DFA process is a very complicated process and consists of several stages. Each stage has a specific heating ramp, temperature and dwell time and also a, a specific atmosphere, gas atmosphere. Now this computer controls all the parameters important for the heat treatment. So to remove all the fluorine compounds in the, from the precursor solution, we need a wet atmosphere in the beginning so that the fluorine reacts with the water and forms hydrofluoric acid. We use micro ramen as a very useful technique to control, for instance, the, uh, the degree of, uh, of advancement of the reaction. We believe that we can go up to about 5 nanometers per second, which is extremely fast uh, growth rate, and this will allow to produce in a continuous way uh, coated conductors at, I don't know, maybe 20, 50 meters per hour. If uh, you still have some barium fluoride, it means that the reaction was not finished. If you use these two peaks, you can even determine the texture of your material because these two modes and the uh, intensity uh, ratio between them exactly determines 
the amount of C-axis and A-axis growth that you have in your material. This hydrofluoric acid is of course very poisonous and dangerous, so we want to get rid of that again, and that's why we let all the exhaust gases from the furnace go through this uh, sodium hydroxide solution to neutralize the hydrofluoric acid. And in the end, all the other gases go all the way to the uh, fume cupboards and in the air. Overall, the energy expenditure to produce large quantities of superconductors must go down. And for that reason, we need to find chemistries which allow us to produce these uh, perovskites at much lower temperatures. Finally, we would like to develop means of dynamic texturing, which means that rather than relying on a textured substrate, we need to have some action with which to uh, align these crystals while they grow. You can think of magnetic systems, you can think of dielectric systems, but before we really will be able to give the engineers and the physicists this material that they want so much, we will need much more detailed research into the fine mechanism and for that we will need more PhDs and more research, more equipment, and obviously to be able to um, understand all these uh, phenomena.